a little bit more about God as our refiner. Yeah. And if you're looking here in Proverbs 25, um, Solomon talks about this, and in order for gold or silver to be refined or purified, it must be melted down in a furnace. Mm -hmm. Until it has gone through the furnace, it doesn't have any real value. Mm. In verse 4 of chapter 25, he says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word, and I pray that You would clear our minds, open our minds to Your Word. Lord, help us to listen to Your Holy Spirit as You speak to us. Yes, Jesus. And Lord, I pray that You would help us to trust You, to, to pay attention and to learn from You like we ought to. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The story of David was the story of the account. I'm like Brother Tommy. I don't like really to call him a story because it kind of sounds like it could be fiction. Yeah. And it's not. Amen. The account of David when he had been out to war with his men, all the men, they come back from war to find that their city that they lived in, all their homes, was burnt to the ground. Yeah. You talking about a fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a fire. It was a literal fire, but it was also a, a different kind of fire that needed to do some cleaning up. Yeah. And it did that. It brought... David and I believe many of his men, maybe not all of them, closer to God. Yeah. In fact, it brought them closer to God in a way they'd have never gone had they not been through that fire. Amen. Again, this verse here in Proverbs, he's talking away, talking about taking away the dross or the impurities away from the silver. If you do that, what you're going to get is a finer piece of silver. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> These impurities not only contaminate the silver, they also create weak points which produce a vulnerability to break. Mm. There's only one solution to the problem. It must go through intense heat so as to cook out the impurities. <clears throat> That's what God does for us. To us, but for us. Yes, amen. There's a difference. Yeah. And if you're stuck on the idea that He's doing that to you, mm. it's time to learn that He's also doing it for you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> There was a fire that uh, Jeanette went through about 17 years ago called cancer. And I believe she was actually praying uh, not too awfully long prior to it that God would help her to draw closer to Him. Yeah. And she felt distant or cold. So she prayed that he would draw her closer to him. Yes. And he did. Yes. Amen. There were some things that she needed to learn during that time. Um, in fact, I'd like for her to tell us a little bit of what that was, if you would. There were two main lessons. The first one was um, it came about um, the week after my first treatment. I found myself um, on the floor in my bedroom in a fetal position, screaming, um, just saying, God, I can't do this. This, this hurts. This, um, you wounded me by putting me through this. Uh, I, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. 
after that. Um, someone, of course, was sharing the story with me of footprints in the sand and how that, you know, that's when God carries you. And the thought hit me, that's not how we train a child to walk. When we want a little kid to learn how to walk, we don't carry them everywhere. We put them down on the ground, um, and we get in front of them and say, come to me. And that is definitely what God was doing to me through that time. Um, when I could not walk, he would stop, stand beside me, help me get my balance. But then he didn't pick me up. He got in front of me again and said, come on, take mm -hmm. another step. And he <coughs> celebrated with me every tiny little step of growth that I made through that. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the two main and she definitely drew closer to God like she asked him to help her with uh, I didn't realize this until this afternoon but this is almost like a sequel to last last Sunday we were talking about this and to some degree um, but just a little, a little bit differently tonight but I, I, and I and I bring that up because I feel like that there's people in this room that are suffering in one way or another, and to one level or another. And there's a reason for it. I don't know the reason. You may not yet, but God has a reason for it. Um, we have impurities that make us unusable by God. That's right. And if you've ever gotten the feeling, God, what are you doing with me? I don't feel like I'm doing anything for you. <clears throat> he wants to. Yeah, amen. That's why He put us here. That's right. In fact, that's why He left us here after we got saved. Because he's got a job for us. But many times we can't even perform that job because of the impurities mm. that God wants to cook out of us. Yeah. And the only way for that to happen is to suffer. <clears throat> These impurities, they cause us to be weak and vulnerable to break under pressure. So God has to put us through that fire That's right. to purify us. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. But it's highly necessary. Yes, it is. <clears throat> if we respond correctly in the fire, God can then use us for His purpose. Yes. If we don't, we got to go through that fire again. Mm-hmm. In 1 Peter, if you would turn there, 1 Peter chapter 5, there's quite a bit of Scripture in God's Word that on this subject of suffering. Right. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, But the God of all grace, I like that word grace, mm -hmm. The God of all grace who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. Mm. His grace is sufficient yes, yes. during our suffering. None of us like to suffer. In fact, we avoid it at all costs. And that's okay. I, I get that. Um, I do too. Mm. However, it's through suffering that God molds and shapes us to become more like Jesus. Remember, He suffered. Big time. In fact, it, when, he, when He came to this world, He came as a, as a baby in a manger. He had nothing. And He never had much more. He was homeless. Didn't have a bed to call his own, really. 
He lived as a pauper, mocked, laughed at, ridiculed, and that was before the crucifixion. Yeah. He certainly suffered. But during our suffering, we have a choice. One, we can get mad at people mm. or God, blame them, even want to take revenge on them yeah. because they made us suffer. But Brother Bruce, you don't know what they did. They had ill motive. Mm. So did Judas. That's right. So did the priest, the high priest, the Pharisees. They definitely had ill motive. Yeah. But God allowed it. Why did He allow it? Because it was His plan. <clears throat> or, that's our first choice, by the way. Second choice, we can look to God to do a work in us. Amen. And allow it to purify us. I know. I realize this sounds weird, sounds odd. How couldn't God have a different plan to make us more like Jesus? I'm sure He could have, but this is the one He chose. Amen. <clears throat> Notice it's not until we had suffered a while, as it says here in First Peter, that God makes us stronger and more usable for His purpose. We have to go through it before the strength comes. Mm. We have to go through it before we learn what it is that God has for us. You show me a man or woman who is greatly used of God, and I'll show you a person who has gone through major suffering. Do you want to be used of God? Mm. Yes. <clears throat> you want to have an impact on eternity yes. through people? Yes. Amen. I heard a young man say one time he was practicing preaching. <laughs> 16 years old, he was in front of the church and he was preaching, I think, his first sermon. But he said something that I've never forgotten. He said, the only thing you'll take to heaven which it's not going to be money. It's not going to be stuff, but it's going to be the souls that you've led to Christ. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> Is that what you want to do? You want to have an impact on eternity? Yes. If you would, turn to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 29. Believe it or not, it's our calling to suffer for Christ's sake. It says in verse 29, For unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Suffering in a successful way. We can do it unsuccessfully, by the way. We can get mad at people. We can get mad at God, blame everybody. That's unsuccessful suffering. Okay? But to suffer successfully requires faith. Because we have to trust God that He knows what He's doing. And He Amen. and He He recognizes what we're going through. In yeah. fact, He may have even orchestrated it. Mm -hmm. I say may have because sometimes He doesn't orchestrate it. He just allows the devil yeah. to get his hand involved, like he mm -hmm. did with Job. Mm -hmm. But God controlled it. Yeah. Remember, He said you can you can touch His body, but you can't kill Him. Amen. He controlled it and let it go just as far as He wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. But it requires faith. We have to trust God that He knows what He's doing. Yes, Amen. <clears throat> Even when other people have made bad choices. Even when they've made those bad choices with ill motive to affect us. Right. Romans 8.18, if you want to turn there and read that, you can make sure that I'm reading the right thing. <clears throat> Romans 8.18. 
<clears throat> Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. There, there's no comparison. Again, this requires faith. Yes. There's a valuable reward down the road mm. for us because of our suffering. And it's far more valuable than the pain yes. that we endured. Amen. What is the purpose of the suffering? Sometimes it's got different reasons, but it's always to draw us closer to Him. Amen. It's always to learn to trust God and walk with Him all the time, not just during the difficult times. But the time you mentioned that this morning, how that some people, they only reach out to God like a spare tire, only when they need it, or when they think that they need. The truth is, we need Him all the time. Amen. 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 He mentioned how that some of the people in the more wealthy neighborhoods that we've been in as we've been canvassing our area, they don't need Jesus. Whoa. They have money. And I I hate to bring it into our room here, but I'm afraid that there's some of us maybe that have had the same mentality. Mm. We don't need Jesus. Everything's going fine. Mm. Why is it going fine? Because He's making it to go fine. Yeah. So what's the purpose for the suffering? It's to learn to trust God. Amen. It's to learn to to say what David said. My eyes are upon thee. The story of Ziklag, if you remember, the Bible says that he was greatly distressed. Yeah. I would have been too. Yes, amen. The Bible says that his men were talking about stoning him. Yeah. Yeah. What did he do? He strengthened himself in the Lord. Yes. He turned to God and sought help. That's right. Sought counsel. Begged for peace. Yes. Begged for wisdom. And God gave it to him. Yes, amen. Not only that, he gave him the entire city. Yeah. All the women and children. They went and found them and took them home. That's right. I don't know what you're going through or what you're going to go through that's difficult. Mm. It may be physical. It may be physical pain that just won't let up. It could be emotional pain. Struggling to figure out how this is going to work out. It could be the worry of a family member that's away from God not knowing what's going to happen to them. It could be a financial problem. You know, the truth is you can, you can do your best on your finances and God can still take it all away. Yeah, amen. I was thinking about this earlier. If God doesn't have our attention... He'll take away what does. Mm. Sometimes that's our finances. Yeah. Sometimes it's people. People that have our attention when it ought to be going to God. <clears throat> but I don't know what you're suffering in right now. But I know that God has a purpose and a plan to make us better, to mm. purify us. To make us more usable for His purpose. That's why we're here. We don't have a pasture. We're in His pasture. Amen. We're His people. Yes. As Psalms 100 teaches us. We're to give Him glory. Yes. 
We're to point others to Him. That's our purpose. Are you doing that? Are you fulfilling the purpose for which God has put us here for? Again, the suffering has a reason. And God, as the great refiner, is doing His best to purify us and to make us what He wants us to be. Don't fight it. Don't get mad at people. Don't get mad at Him. Instead, ask Him what it is that He wants you to learn. Amen. Look for that. And He may not show you that immediately. That's right. You may never know it, really, in this life. Right. But He has a purpose. Yes, Amen. Trust Him. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank You for Your Word. And Lord, as, as painful and difficult that it is, I thank You for the suffering. Because without it, we would be so far from You. Mm. Lord, I pray that You would help us to respond correctly in the suffering that You put us through so that we can shine for You and fulfill the purpose that You've put us here for. Thank You, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn to page 470. 470.